Good morning, Annie. How are you? Good morning, Dominica. I'm very good. How are good. you? I'm very well. Lovely to see you. I know it's raining outside, but uh, um, good morning, everybody. So this is Annie, who Annie and I work with um, a number of brands helping with Chinese culture. And Hi, one Annie. of the <laughs> and one of the things that um, we're asked about all the time is British businesses struggling to understand either distributors or agents or how to manage their teams in China. So Annie and I are going to run a two-part webinar series in a couple of weeks' time, and I thought this would be a good opportunity just to talk about why we're doing that webinar and the sorts of things we're going to discuss. So I'm Domenica. I'm a CEO of a Chinese Anglo agency with a team in Shanghai and a team in London Bridge, and I employ 22 Chinese nationals over in the UK and in China, and I have many years of experience, eight years now, of managing China teams, both suppliers, partners, and staff. And Annie, you'd just like to introduce yourself and just say what you do for businesses in the UK. Thank you, okay. So, hello everybody, my name is Annie. So, um, uh, in before 2014, so I was um, kind of like a Chinese secondary school teacher, so I taught um in china more than 10 years wow. then 2014 i moved to uk to do my master's degree then my subject is human resource management after that i go back to um, focus on education because i love it then now i'm uh, in ucl so doing my phd so my area is uh, leadership and the well-being so that's why i met um, domenica then we uh, talk about a lot of cultural issues then we are doing kind of cultural learning because now recently I'm um, I'm in Chinese school London so I'm a kind of like a academic manager and I'm a one of the co-founder with this school so I really love teaching fantastic and I can testament to that because Annie is not only my Chinese teacher which takes a lot of patience but has also helped a lot of our brands to understand their teams. So why do you think it's important, Annie, to understand Chinese culture when you are managing suppliers, staff, and teams in China? Do you think it matters? Uh, it really, really matters. So basically for, for me, as, uh, as an example, when I firstly moved to UK in 2014, Essentially, it's a, a lot of challenge for me because you don't understand the culture here. Basically, I, I live and I work in China just so many years. So literally, I just know Chinese culture. I don't know other con countries' cultures. So basically, when I move here, a lot of kind of, kind of misunderstanding mm. there and the challenge me. For example, so for Chinese culture, basically the biggest culture in, impact is a hierarchical culture. So right. when you're in hierarchical culture for Chinese people, so when you, for example, when you have a have a work, you work there, basically you follow this kind, kind of uh, approaches. So you're gonna follow what your leader, what your manager told you to do. Okay, you yeah. do one, two, three, four, five. You just follow it like a robot. Do it, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. that's it. But when you moved here, so people, it's an open in mind. So they want to share the ideas with you. Then you got panic because you don't know how to do it. They mm. ask you, okay, can you tell your, uh, can you tell us what do you think? What do you think? What, what kind of question? You can't <laughs> ask me, what do you think? You need to tell me one, two, three, four, five. So this is a kind of like a um, cultural misunderstanding. And it's a big challenge if you don't know Chinese culture is hierarchical way. Otherwise, how to deliver your target it's very difficult to deliver because when you ask them they don't know they don't share <laughs> it's it's really interesting isn't it and from yeah. a british perspective i'm used to being able to say to my senior management team here's your autonomy to go and and to do your job but now i find with my very anglo-sized chinese staff of which most are here in the, in the uk 
that's fine. They've been here a while. They, they know how it works. But when I've worked with agents, distributors on behalf of clients, I've seen the difference. It's like they need a directive and the directive's got to come from the right person in the organization. Same when I'm dealing with universities that have got uh, disparate sales teams in market. Same with property agents. Um, so it really is an issue, I think, in understanding who in the organization has to give the directive of what's expected and in what format. So yeah. what sorts of things have you seen happen from brands and from businesses in the UK when they don't understand each other? Uh, it's um, it's a, a lot of examples when I sort of like I deal with people or my students, they share their experience to me because every time a kind of like each single lesson, so we, we, we will talk a lot of about cultural issues. Then we'll say, wow, this is exactly me. <laughs> so a lot of my students, they will say like, we try to speak with trans people but the problem is they don't say no and they say yes always say yes we don't know what is true yes and what is true no or they are too shy to open their mouths we don't know what they are thinking or i give them some kind of like a task uh, ask them to write a report and they don't know kind of like we got really struggling with our stuff. They, we, we don't understand each other. We understood, we, we, we don't understand each other, misunderstanding. So this kind of like a panic, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff dealing with it. And for my own experience, so for trans people, doesn't mean we know nothing or uh, we don't want to share. That the problem is and another cultural issue is uh, we fail to lose face. So yeah. culture yeah. is very important in China. So it's it, it, it kind of like you can't make mistakes. If you make mistake, you are not a good person. You are yeah. not qualified. So has this kind of pressure on our shoulder. So basically we don't share it. So this is a big problem. So this is how you, you, you need to kind of like modify your communication skills when you communicate with trans people then maybe encourage them, then you will get um, amazing outcomes. Maybe they Absolutely. will open their, their, their mouth, they will talk with, with you. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting. When I, when I talk to our brands and I help them with, uh, and I know certainly Marie, one of my colleagues does this a lot as well, help with agent relationships, partnership relationships, even media partner relationships. Yes. Or to mold teams and we get Chinese sales teams together with the marketing teams over here and we, we have one collaborative approach. Because all too often, it's not actually the first week or the first month or the first quarter that things go horribly wrong. It takes a while before you realize, actually, my team hasn't delivered that on time or we're not really getting the results that we expected or our sales are actually dropped off a cliff. It takes a little bit of time before things start to, to go wrong. And all too often it is because the team don't understand what you've asked for and are too scared to say, I don't understand. They, they feel that that will be losing face. So, this first webinar that we're going to be running together, what are the sorts of things that we're going to explore in order for companies to take some real practical advice as to how to better manage teams and partnerships in China? Yes, so for our first webinars, we think we will be focused on discuss the trans real culture. So we will understand yeah. what kind of trans culture we have. So when we understand the culture first, then we know, okay, under this cultural circumstance, how we deliver our target or how we set up our relationship or how we communicate with Chinese stuff or kind of like suppliers better. So this is the first webinars we will kind of like discover the Chinese really culture. Brilliant. And the second webinar, we're going to be talking about more practical ways, aren't we? Yes. Um, and this is something that I think when you delivered this training to me a couple of years ago was kind of life changing. It's things like how to manage timekeeping, how to get more out of Chinese teams in meetings, how to understand how to direct 
what you want out of a report or a piece of work. So it's real practical takeaways for businesses that manage Chinese teams, isn't it? Yes. Um, and that's come from years of experience for you working with Chinese businesses and also working with Chinese colleagues and, and also being Chinese yourself and coming over here and, and not understanding when somebody's asking you to do something. Yeah, yes, yes. It, it, it's very, very interesting, essentially. So after you know these kind of cultures, then you will, you will feel like it's amazing changing yeah. in your life or in your workplace. Certainly from our standpoint, we've seen brands take on this advice, change the way they communicate, um, both here and in China. So that's even British teams who suddenly get seconded to China uh, to work to actually manage Chinese teams and those that are doing it remotely. And the differences are quite staggering, aren't they? Just in terms of work starts to come on time, it comes in the right format, there's better communication. Then you find that your teams start to ask questions and start to engage because they know yeah. it's not losing face. But it is a bit slowly, slowly catchy monkey, as we say in the UK. There has to be a step-by-step -step process to get that trust with your team. Yes. And, Absolutely. Well, thank you, Annie. I'm greatly looking forward to co-presenting these two webinars with you in a couple of weeks time. For those out there, I will be posting a link um, on social media. Just book into the, the webinar we're doing free of charge. We hope it will help businesses as much as we've helped businesses over the years to understand teams and better manage teams. And we hope you find it incredibly interesting. And I know that I've worked with Annie for a couple of years and she's incredible. So thank you so much for your time, you. Annie, today. Thank you so much to give me these opportunities to share our ideas and to kind of like to make people understand the Chinese culture better. Thank you. Well, so it's an absolute pleasure working with you. And thank you. And look forward to seeing you all on our webinar. Take care. Thank you. Take care.